Hello, my name is Rebecca Presswood, and I'm one of the instructors in RNSG 1327 uh, trans transition uh, course that you're taking it during the summer. And our book, um, the Claywell book, RN LPN to RN Transitions by Laura Claywell, is a divided kind of funny for me. This is a new book for us, but we're going to talk about Chapter 4. First, and the reason why we're talking about this is uh, you're going to experience various role development conflicts in this new venture that you're taking. You've been preparing for entering the program. Now you're in the program, and um, you're going to hopefully we will teach you and show you the difference between the practice, the nursing practice of an RN and an LP. In the state of Texas, I think state of Texas is the only state in the whole United States that calls our practical nurses LVNs, and everywhere else um, they're considered LPNs, licensed practical nurses. So that's why the uh, your book always differentiates or uses all the acronyms, all those acronyms, to make sure you know the difference. You have prepared for this. You've taken prerequisites. Um, you obviously, you paid money, um, you've rearranged your life, hopefully, and are ready to devote um, your time to the program for the next nine months, 12 months. Um, but some internal barriers that you may be facing starting this program are barriers you probably dealt with your whole life. It's no different now that you're in this program. And you've heard from others that it's hard, and it is. But it's worth it, and it is. It is worth it. And I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't have done this for 13 years now if I didn't believe that um, the students we admit in June to be, be to graduate with our generic students in May and take sit for the NCLEX exam and become RNs couldn't do it and be awesome nurses, and they are. But some of the barriers you're going to face as a um, as a new stu stu student, you're a full-time student now, and it will be more full-time in the fall, um, is you're a fear of failure. Yes, we do have students um, not successful in the summer. Occasionally it has happened. Uh, yes, we do have students that are not successful in fourth semester. That has happened. But it doesn't mean it's going to happen to you. And if it does happen to you, it's not the end of the world. Um, there's a reason for everything. You can uh, just take it a little slower and be behind the other students that you started with. Or you can choose to do something else. You're already a nurse. You already have a license to practice nursing. So, I mean, it, it, it's a win-win for you to finish this and be a registered nurse and be more, make more money and have more responsibility. It's, it's awesome. Uh, you may be confused about what is expected of you in the program, and we, we hope to clear that up as we go along. Just stay calm and hang in there. Ask questions when you need to. You may have feelings of, be, of being overwhelmed, um, and that I think that's very normal. One of the jobs I've had since I've been at Glenn is for three years I went to Schulen. We had a program in Schulenburg at the Schulenburg campus, and I got to um, lead. The, they just happened to be all women students. We didn't have any men when, uh, when I was there. And probably I could tell you a meltdown each one of them had sometime during the program. And it just, it happens. And that's just life. So don't be too alarmed when it happens to you. Um, some external barriers that you're going to have to deal with is your family needs. Some of you have children that are going to, you're going to feel like you're neglecting. You're going to have a spouse who is going to tell you that you're neglecting them. Um, you have to arrange child care. Maybe we have a single parent. We've had lots of single parents in the past. 
that I don't know how in the world they juggled it to be at the hospital at 6.30 in the morning, but they did, uh, when most daycares aren't open yet. Um, financial concerns, you probably did, don't make a lot of money, and you're not making a lot of money right now, but the Blinn College wants you to pay money, plus your electric bill is due, and your car payment is due, and your car insurance is due, and we know that, and it's a sacrifice that you're going to have to make. But I promise you it's going to be worth it. I promise. Uh, job demand. Some of you are going to have to continue working just to make to pay bills and buy groceries. And uh, your job is says they're going to be understanding, but there are going to be times when they're short-staffed or things didn't work out like they planned, especially around the holidays, and they're not going to be too happy about you not being there or saying you, you have a test on Thursday and you really need to have Tuesday, Wednesday off so you can study. They're not going to be very sympathetic, unfortunately. And personal needs, life happens. People get sick. People get pregnant. People fracture legs. People have surgery. Um, it just That's just life. And we'll deal with it when we get to it. it I promise um, you could not tell me or Dr. Parrott, a scenario that we haven't seen and conquered before. So um, you can worry about it if you want to, but I would worry about something else if I were you. I think that would be a better use of your worrying energy. Um, okay, so let's go. Chapter four is going to talk, we're going to talk about the distinguishing uh, differences in roles. And hopefully, I'm going to follow the book very closely. I would recommend you just open your book and follow along as I'm talking. Um, it might prevent you from having to read every word. I have read every word of the chapter, and I enjoyed it very much. But I have a feeling that um, your mindset right now, that's not something you could really enjoy doing or choose to spend your time doing. But um, anyway, I think you should. The impact of role changes and health status changes are varied, um, and you may find opportunities to apply this information in your personal and work experiences, including your transition to the RN role. Role transition, uh, your book calls it professional role socialization, where uh, the roles carry a set of expectations already as in your practice. You've you are expected to behave a certain way, talk a certain way, dress a certain way. So that's expectations, and that is not going to change when you become an RN. It may be even a little stricter. Uh, in this role, you'll sit, have a sense of belonging. You, you're going to belong to an elite group of men and women that are registered nurses in the uh, United States of America. Um, you are going to notice that there is an incongruence, meaning they don't quite match up theory and practice. As, try, as hard as we try to um, teach in the book a certain way, when you get to practice, it's not quite that way. And you probably already know that. You're going to have a tacit understanding based on how others treat you. Uh, as a rule, in, in the 21st century, nurses are highly regarded and trusted as a profession, but it hasn't always been that way. You've probably seen movies where women were treated as handmaidens, or um, even at one point in our history, they were considered prostitutes. That was a long time ago, and that it, we've come a long way, baby. We are um, educated better and higher higher regarded, needed more, higher regarded by the uh, population of the United States. Hopefully you're going to have a shift in identity from a licensed practical nurse to an LD, from your um, licensed vocational nurse to an RN, and a sense of legitimacy, meaning your profession is needed, wanted, and you as a person, because of your skills, because of your knowledge, because of your intuition, are going to be wanted uh, by 
some agency. Maybe the same agency you're working for now, maybe a new one. Um, the role conflict comes from part of one of the aspects of the role conflict may come from you still having to work as an LVN. And by the way, you must maintain your LVN license while you're in this program. If it becomes due while you're in the program, you must renew it to be to stay in the program because that's part of the qualifications of you being here is being an LVN. So you're going to be in working as an LVN, but in school learning to be an RN, and it's going to be difficult. And um, you have a um, discussion post that kind of pertains to that to help you start thinking about that. Uh, even other disciplines like a paramedic, which has a great deal of autonomy with their license, um, when they are in school as an RN, it changes. Their expectation changes, and that's sometimes difficult for them. Um, one of the things that you're going to do when you start, you, you don't sign uh, documentation much anymore because of the um, electronic health record. But students always always catch them. They'll sign their name, LVN. When now, as a student, you sign your name, um, SN Blinn. Um, yeah, that's right. And I recommend to you to relish the role of a student. At this time next year, when you are about to take your NCLEX, or you've already taken it and you're already an RN, you're going to be expected to know things and work autonomously. Whereas now, as an RN student, you have your, your instructor with you for many skills, which is nice for you. Um, you have the luxury of saying, oh, we haven't learned that yet in skills, which that really doesn't, it's not going to happen to y'all because only skills you haven't done yet will ever get are very few. Um, but anyway, relish the role. I'll tell you a story. I have had students, um, the doctor ordered a urinary catheterization, say, and the student comes to me at the end of the day. I'm saying, well, what did you do in clinical today? Because I didn't see everything every student said, did. And the student says, <coughs> Well, I inserted a urinary catheter. And I said, I wasn't with you. And she said, well, the RN handed me a kit, and I've done do it at work, so I went and did it. Well, in this instance, that's the incorrect behavior. The student should have uh, had me or another RN with them while they did that skill, even though they do it at work all the time. Because part of the job of the instructor in clinical is to make, make sure your clinical skills are up to what we expect and go by evidence-based practice. And I did not get to witness that with that student. So um, we, had, we cleared that up and it never happened again. So there you go. Some of the roles of RNs, you're, you're up at a diamond there because your book says it's like the facets of a diamond. It all comes together to create a beautiful jewel. So as you are an RN jewel, you're, some these roles that are listed here are going to be some of yours. The biggest one, and one you're already very familiar with and very comfortable with, hopefully, is a care provider. And that's not going to stop. You're still going to be a care provider. But some other roles that you may not have experienced so far in your practice, you'll be a counselor. Um, we look at the patient as a whole, and many times their psychosocial needs uh, mean that they need a counselor. You're going to be an educator. You maybe you do some teaching now, but it is absolutely the role of an RN to educate clients. Any new skill, any new uh, Thing, anything new we expect from them. And, of course, discharge plan planning and discharge teaching is always a, a big teaching 
kind of aspect also. A manager, not only of a unit like a charge nurse or a head nurse or a unit manager, but also to manage your patient care. You have a multitude of um, different things that you have to take into account when you have four, five, six patients and there's so many things that need to be done, medications that need to be done, done given at different times, procedures that have to be done. Uh, so you're a manager of your profession and also of patient care. You're an advocate. Many times nurses are the one that d um, translate what has been told by a physician or another health care provider uh, that the patient doesn't understand. So you are standing this in the place of that patient and, and you are there for them for their benefit. You're a collaborator. All RNs work with multi, multi disciplines, not only physicians, but uh, physical therapists, um, occupational therapists, dietary. I mean, if we work as a team, everybody works as a team for the um, benefit of the client. You're a change agent. If you think a change needs to be made, many times that's your role, to be that person that makes that change. You're a role model. Maybe you'll be a preceptor or a and a student nurse um, when when you become an RN and that way and also some people watch you and look at you and look up to you and what you do in your practice. You're a mentor again one of the best things about our program that students say all the time they thought was um, the most beneficial to them their practice was to the preceptorship program that's the last six weeks a fourth semester, um, and they are with another RN that serves as their mentor briefly and uh, precepts their practice and uh, helps get them ready for uh, NCLEX and to be RNs. RNs are researchers. There's that's uh, Nursing is an art and a science, and what makes it a science is that we do research. You're an entrepreneur. There are more and more nurses that are starting their own business. They're um, using the education that they have to help others in just in very creative ways. So RNs are um, entrepreneurs. The differences between LVNs and RN roles is RNs are very independent and autonomous. There are many, there are LVNs that practice autonomously. <coughs> Sorry, this one got something to drink. I'm sorry. Uh, but many RNs are out in the in practice. School nurses practice autonomously. Um, home health nurses practice autonomously. Hospice nurses practice autonomously. Camp nurses. Um, there's a lot of nurses, depending on their education, that practice without the um, benefit of having a peer with them or another health care professional. The educational level changes. Hopefully, we're going to show you that you're not um, not not concerned about how something happens, but why. Why are we using this medication? Why wh why does this lab value mean that this needs to happen? So we want you to be uh, lifelong learners and critically think more than you've ever done in your whole life. Hopefully, that the what you have in class. And what you read in your books, uh, and the activities that we provide will make you want to do that. You've already taken uh, your assessment skills. You've already taken an assessment class with much more thorough assessments than you did in vocational nursing uh, school. Um, and hopefully you're going to get to use those and be proud of how you can um, notice variations from the normal. Care planning. There's going to be another... Um, Integrity video on care planning where I talk about it a lot. It's chapter six, I believe, in your book. Um, and you will do a care plan this summer and a care plan in the fall in both the courses that you take in the fall. So it, it's a very important part of being an RN to think through uh, the steps of why we take care of patients a certain way and then evaluate if that care was effective. Legal and leadership responsibilities. 
many of you uh, after you're an RN will have a leadership role that you don't qualify for right now. IV therapy, that's something your book goes into some detail about it, and if you're curious, please read it. But that varies from state to state. It also varies from um, agency to agency, depending on the training that LVNs have had. You may have already done IV therapy, but as RNs, you will be expected to. And if you've never done IV therapy in your job, then we're going to go over it and hopefully make you comfortable so you can do it um, in clinical. Communication skills. We we do we try to match our teaching with our learner. Uh, in the book we had before this one, we talked about that at great length, and you've probably already talked about it in vocational nursing school. But um, you are expected to be able to teach our clients the best way they can learn. I'm not going to go into any detail, but because your book doesn't either. And then patient teaching skills, <coughs> same thing. You teach them how they best can learn. If they're, they don't read, then you're not going to hand them a pamphlet to read. You're going to talk to them and try to relate them to something in their life. Um, <coughs> cr critical thinking or critical reasonings, clinical reasoning, uh, like it's being called some nowadays, is the art of thinking about your thinking while you are, you are thinking in order to make your thinking better. That's a quote by Richard Paul from 1992. Um, and if if it's not late at night or you haven't had something to drink and, and you've had plenty of sleep, if you read that, it makes a lot of sense. Um, and, and we'll be talking about it probably ad nauseum this summer and in the future. Educational preparation um, diff is different for RNs. All candidates to become RNs take the same exam, no matter what their educational preparation is. But there are different different types of uh, educational programs. I want to talk to you a little bit about that. Uh, the the oldest one, and I don't even know if there's there was one in Lubbock, and I didn't. Google it to see if it was still there. It's called a diploma program. They're hospital based, and it almost appears as if the program is grooming the student to work at that hospital. Um, but like I said, there's only they've kind of um, gone away. Usually, it's a two to three year program. And associate degree nursing, which you're enrolled in, is uh, was started in 1952. There are several in the state several wonderful programs in the state, which Glenn is one of those. Um, if you look in uh, eCampus, there's a link to RN Careers, and we're ranked number four in the state of Texas out of like 152 programs, and we're real proud of that, and we're real proud of you for choosing Glenn College for your education. Um, there's the Baccalaureate or bachelor's degree program in nursing, which Texas A&M is. There are several in the state. There, I graduated from one. I graduated from Texas Holmes University um, way back in the 70s, so they've been around for a long time, uh, since the beginning of the 1900s. And uh, just aside, a little aside, ner uh, hospitals that are trying to achieve magnet status can only hire and employ nurses that have been baccalaureate degree nursing prepared. So, and our expectation of you is not to stop at associate degree nursing, but to go on and get your BSN. Uh, if you stay in this area, uh, in the Brazos Valley, Texas A&M is a great place to get a, a degree, and why not? But you, the Plus, and the positive for you is that uh, you can work, earn money as a registered nurse while you are earning your bachelor's. And I think you get to use your work as your clinical. So um, I don't discourage you from being, being in an ABN program. I think it's great. You're getting a great education. Our NCLEX pass rate is right up there with uh, almost as good as Texas A&M's. So um, it's a great 
great part of your professional growth. There are also advanced RN educational programs. You, you can get a master's degree. And if you get a master's degree, um, you can do things like teach at Blinn. Um, our, all of our instructors are required to have their master's degree. You can get a, a doctoral degree, which Dr. Parrott has and Dr. Ross has. Um, they've gone on to school, which is they have to write a dissertation and do some research. Um, Dr. Parrott was on Dr. Ross's committee to approve her research that she did. And um, what do they call it? When you they sit for the, uh, they have to defend their research and present it orally besides the paper that they've written. Uh, and she was on that committee, which was pretty neat. Um, are all nursing programs, well, not all, a program that is worth your time going to and that you can um, borrow money to attend and uh, the military looks at your education to see if you've attended an uh, accredited program um, exist. It is intended to demonstrate to the public that a nursing program meets national standards, requirements, and criteria. Our program is accredited by ASIN, Accreditation Commission for Education in Nursing. Uh, <coughs> every five years, we have to be re-accredited, and we're coming up on that in a couple of years. It's a pretty rigorous um, expectations and uh, requirements that they have. So um, know that you your program is. The uh, State Board of Nurses makes sure that requirements are met to be to be a uh, a, program, a nursing program, but then to be accredited is done by ASIN. Baccalaureate programs are accredited by Commission on Collegiate Nursing Education, the CCNE, and uh, Texas A&M does qualify for that. <coughs> there are specialty nursing certifications. The American Nurses Credentialing Center. Um, oversees that. You can be um, a critical critical care nurse. Um, you can be a um, maternal child. I don't even know what the right names are. They do have a wonderful website if you want to look at it. Uh, there's even a nursing certification to be a certified nurse educator. Mrs. Forsberg Dr. Ross um, on our faculty are all CNE cert certified. I am going to feel really bad if there's other people I didn't remember them. But anyway. We are encouraged as nursing to belong to professional nursing organizations. The American Nurses Association is the biggest one that represents 3.1 million registered nurses um, in the state. They not only represent us, uh, but they will also they send lobbyists to Congress on our behalf and the behalf of um, patients. Um, if you need legal assistance, the American Nurses Association in the state of Texas, we also have a very strong Texas Nurses Association there in Austin. But the purpose of that is it fosters the high standards of nursing practice promotes the rights of nurses in the workplace, projects a positive and realistic view of nursing, and helps by participating in lobbying efforts on health care issues that affect nurses and the public. Um, there are many organizations that are dedicated to specialty practice, and belonging to one of them provides education and socialization in nursing. One of the things I miss most about uh, working full-time at Blinn as a faculty in the nursing program is being able to go to the national meetings. It's called ODIN, Organization of Associate Degree Nursing. They're really fun places every year. I've gotten to go to Chicago, Jacksonville, Florida, St. Louis, Missouri, Dallas, Texas, um, to New Orleans, Louisiana. 
to name a few for these wonderful uh, conferences where I get to be with other people that are educators and um, learn different ways and theory about education. So I encourage you to be a member of the professional nursing organization. Scope of, scope of practice identifies the responsibility of nurses depending on their educational preparation. Uh, it's, divine, it's defined by every state uh, state board of nursing in the Nurse Practice Act. You can look on the State Board of Nursing uh, website and see the Nurse Practice Act for the state of Texas for registered nursing. Um, and state board of nurses are there to protect the consumers of nursing care by regulating the profession. They are not punitive. They're not uh, designed to be punitive, but many times they have to be because you probably received that um, paper once a don't we get it once a quarter where in the inside are people that have been tr been in trouble and made bad decisions and it affects their ability to practice. The National Council of State Board of Nursing um, is the kind of oversees the state boards of nursing. They also have an awesome website that I highly recommend you visit. I had a, a hyperlink to the ANA web, website. I forgot to show it to you a while ago. It's nursingworld.org. But the ANA's publication, Nursing, Scope of and Standards of Practice, is uh, something that you will want to investigate. It is a PDF document that you can download. It addresses the scope of practice and delineates the practice and professional performance standards and measurement criteria for our RNs. There are six standards of practice, which are also the same as the nursing practice, uh, nursing um, my mind just went blank. And there are 11 standards of professional performance that the ANA, um, the nursing process is what, I had the right, wrong P word. Uh, the, there are six steps in the nursing process, the same thing as standards of practice. And we're going to talk about them also in another Tegrity lecture um, that you need to know about. The six standards of practice, which is also the nursing process, or assessment, diagnosis, outcomes identification, which is a new one, planning, implementation, and evaluation. And we're going to talk, your book goes into a little bit of detail about the difference between the standards of practice for an LVN and an RN, and you may want to look at that and see what they say. The 11 standards of professional performance are these. Um, some of these we've already talked about. Um, and one that really stands out, or there's several that stand out to me. One is culturally congruent practice, and that has become more and more necessary with our changing population in the United States, and especially our population in the Brazos Valley because of Texas A&M, all the different cultures that are in this community, and that if you work here that you'll be um, providing health care for. And then environmental health has become much more uh, in the forefront with um, our keeping our environment as clean as possible and things in our environment causing illness. Um, there's a multi-state licensure called the Nurse Licensure Compact that the NCS BN um, developed. Now there's multi many states that are a member of this where you can pass your boards in one state and practice in another. <coughs> if you practice in another, you're still responsible for uh, the laws of that compact state and must know um, them and abide by them. And it's your responsibility, not the State Board of Nurses for that state, to tell you what they are. My voice is going away. I'm, I'm better hurry. Um... One thing about LVNs is that the, your practice is considered directed by an RN physician or another health care provider, and they usually, LVNs usually prepare, provide care in settings where people have common health problems, not acute 
um, critical health problems and they focus on meeting basic needs. And an LVN is considered a technical nurse, even though you do have a license to practice. Florence Nightingale believed that the role of nursing is to put the patient in the best condition possible for healing to take place. Back in the 70s when I was in back getting my bachelor's degree, we really uh, focused on high-level wellness, that everybody has a, a level of wellness that uh, they are at, and that it is healthcare providers' responsibility to try to keep them there. Uh, we've kind of gone away from that. I still, it's still very appropriate, as you, you probably know. And then the American Nurses Association says the protection, promotion, and optimization of health and abilities, prevention of illness and injury, alleviation of suffering through the diagnosis and treatment of human response, that's very interesting, and advocacy in the care of individuals, families, communities, and population are part of the scope of practice of a registered nurse. In the scope of practice for a registered nurse, there are three primary roles for ADN graduates. Provider of care, which you already do as an LVN. Manager of care, I've already mentioned to you about that. Member of profession, professional, we've talked about that also. Uh, associate degree nurses are one of, um, do not always have a management course in their curriculum. Blinn does. It's an online course, a one-hour credit course that they'll take uh, fourth semester. The agenda for the future, according to the American Nurses Association, um, are these things, leadership and planning, delivery systems, legislation, regulation, policy, the professional nursing culture, recruitment and retention, the economic value, work environment, uh, public relations, communication, education, and diversity. Um, nursing has come a long way. We have a long way to go. Healthcare has a long way to go. Uh, so hopefully you can be a change agent in improving healthcare for the citizens of the United States of America. It's kind of um, limping along right now. Four, there are four um, key elements in the future of nursing. They should Nurses should pr practice to the full extent of their education and training, and that's what you're about. <coughs> Excuse me, what you're about to do. You should always be a lifelong learner, even if you don't get additional education. Always uh, strive and yearn to learn more. And we are partners with physicians. We don't practice medicine; we practice nursing. We are not physicians, we are nurses, both care, health care providers, and both should all um, health care professionals should work together uh, and collaborate on the health care of individuals. Um, effective workforce planning and policy making require better data collection and information infrastructure. If you want to do research, uh, it's an awesome way, uh, nursing is an awesome way to get in the door for that and gather data to improve, to prove that things need to be changed and how, how the best way to choose them. Congratulations on choosing Blinn College and choosing to better yourself, uh, become a registered nurse and be a better nurse for your clients. Hopefully, um, you'll feel better about all aspects of your nursing practice and uh, it's exciting to watch you grow and this time next year you will have graduated and gotten your pin and um, hopefully have an appointment with Pearson View to take your NCLEX exam and be a registered nurse and take care of me since I'm old. Thanks.